Thanks very much indeed, Trevor, for that um, introduction and for setting the scene for us. Um, my name is Jim Hall. I uh, led the Marius project over the last um, four years, and I'm just going to provide um, a bit more context and also some an overview of the Marius project to set the scene for the material that you're going to have from our research team um, over the course of this morning. And I'm going to go back um, to where uh, Trevor started as well by setting a bit of um, context for this project uh, in that, as Trevor said, um, back in the 2010-2012 drought, um, the Environment Agency, the Research Council, DEFRA, Ofwat, um, began to start thinking about what the research needs were in this area. It takes a long time to get a big research project off the ground and um, it, it was really quite um, inspirational on the part of the research councils um, led by the National Environment Research Council to get together with um, all of the other research councils um, to promote a very interdisciplinary approach to droughts and what we should do about them. And that's how the, uh, the, the Marius project has, has come about. In the meantime, um, and thanks to that research funding, a great deal has happened scientifically. Um, and you're going to hear about that this morning. And um, a great deal has happened in the policy arena as well. Um, we've had the 2014 Water Act, the Climate Change Risk Assessment, uh, Water UK's work on developing a, a long-term planning framework for water resources. Um, we're just about to see draft water resource management plans. Um, and looking ahead, um, very shortly, we're expecting a 25-year environment plan from DEFRA, um, and next year we will see a national infrastructure assessment. Um, so this has been a, an extremely active space with some really long-term implications um, for the water sector um, and for society as a whole, and Marius has sought to engage with those challenges. Where the duty of resilience points is to being much more explicit about the trade-offs that are um, inherent in water resources and water management. In the energy sector, they talk about the, uh, the, the trilemma, the balance between security of energy supplies, affordability for energy users, and environmental impacts. And what the way in which water is going is being much more explicit about this set of trade-offs. It's no longer a question of least cost, subject to some often ambiguously defined constraints with respect to security of supply in the environment. Um, we're getting into a space where we need to think much more explicitly about what are the, uh, the, the risks um, of water shortage and water scarcity to um, the environment and to society and the economy. And what that points to in research terms is much more explicit evaluation of risk. Um, and that is a big challenge scientifically when we start to look at droughts and water scarcity. To actually go from looking at um, what's happened in the past to understanding how the likelihood and characteristics of droughts might change in the future, and also looking much more explicitly about what the consequences of droughts are for um, the economy, for people, for industry, for the environment, for society. And so it's those science challenges which inspired the Marius project, where we're trying to develop a much more risk-based approach to analyzing and thinking about droughts and then looking at how that works through the way in which we make decisions um, about uh, droughts and water resources management. <coughs> you, Helen's shown you um, a, quite a complicated picture of the Marius project which we'll navigate through this morning. Um, here's a slightly <coughs> simplified version. We begin with understanding um, what's the policy and societal context for droughts, what, how do we understand droughts, that's um, World Street A, 
then the, the, the core of Marius has been an end-to-end -end analysis of risks, looking at uh, climatic drivers, what effect that has on hydrology, what the likelihood of water shortages are for um, for people, the economy, the environment, and what are the cons possible consequences of drought. And then that understanding of risk um, goes through into how we incorporate that in decision making. What are the options for responding to drought um, and how do those compare with one another with respect to the trilemma. A few principles um, which we've adhered to. One is a systems approach and Trevor's referred to that as well. So we're looking at the competing demands upon water um, for public water supply, for agriculture, for energy, for industry and for the environment and taking a whole systems approach. We're taking a multi-scale approach um, and one of the very exciting things which has happened over the, the last few years is this growing capability to analyse the regional and national picture as well as looking at the, the river basin scale. And that capability um, in terms of national risk assessment <coughs> and national water resources planning is really coming into place now. And um, we're also looking at the way, the dynamics of the way in which things change through time. So what are the pathways by which we can navigate through time? This is just one instance of, uh, of adaptive pathways planning. How can we put together different uh, policy interventions in order to deal with uh, possible um, uh, water shortages? And what effect does that have both in the way in which risk evolves through time um, and also the associated uncertainties, the, uh, the, the width of that band around risks. And the final conceptual point I would emphasize is the one I've touched on already, the one of navigating trade-offs, recognizing um, that uh, you can't have resilience for nothing. Um, so there's a trade-off here between broadly on the, on the upper axis, some metric of, of uh, risk of water shortages, on the x-axis, the cost of a plan. There's a trade-off in there. This sort of trade-off needs to be on the agenda for the board level in, in water companies. It needs to be on the agenda in, in discussions with water customers and users to identify where you want to be having exposed that trade-off with respect to a tolerable level of risk. And um, we're going to see um, a lot of this in the uh, draft water resource management plans, which is shortly going to come out. There's been a fantastic amount of innovation in those plans. Um, but looking ahead uh, in the Marius project, we've been, been very much looking towards the next steps, what's coming up, um, and how can the science that we're doing inform um, the uh, next climate change risk assessment, work around drought plans, and the journey towards um, water resource management plans in 2024. And um, in 2024, I'd like to think that we're going to see plans then which are much more explicitly based upon evaluation of risks, of probabilities and consequences for every company. This type of explicit evaluation of, of, of trade-offs um, in terms of things which matter to water users, observable outcomes. So I think I'd like to think that abstract quantities like um, deployable output and supply demand balances, convenient as they are, um, are going to diminish in terms of their importance in the process and we're going to be talking much more in terms of observable outcomes and how much we value those outcomes, how much are we prepared to pay in order to avoid them. And thanks to Marius, we now have a lot of the science in order to do that. Which brings me um, to the rest of today. Um, today, you're going to hear a lot of science. And the purpose of today is to disseminate that, but also to enter into a discussion around what we do next. Um, we're very fortunate in that the research councils have brought forward some more funding <coughs> to um, enable further dissemination and engagement of the four projects within the UK Drought and Water Scarcity Programme. Um, that new initiative is, is known as Endows. 
um, and Jamie Hennaford, who leads in Downs, is, is with us today. So, in the light of what we discussed today, that we've got the opportunity to work with people in the room and with other stakeholders um, to take the outputs of this research forward and make sure that it really has an impact. So, thank you for your attention and try and keep up that attention for the rest of what's going to be a high speed morning. <laughs>